All right, welcome to topic eight, creating and using the building blocks. Now, this is commonly where the method, we refer to as the method as part of our three-step approach, and we're gonna be dealing with the ADM, which is the architecture development method. Right, so what we have is a how to do architecture, and it's always important to have a consistent way of actually developing your architecture. It's fine to also, you know, it's, it's paramount to have a way to categorize your architecture, but if you've got a whole bunch of maverick architects all kind of doing it their own special way, that creates its own set of problems in the organization. So that's why we have the ADM. So let's take a closer look at the ADM, which is the architecture development method. Now I'm gonna give you, teach you a technique on how to actually draw it. All right, so what you do is you've got four circles that you need to work with, all right? And out of the bottom three, you need to develop a bit of a cross shape like that so that you have this kind of effect, all right? And then you join them up. Now all you need to do is fill in the gaps. So put a gap there, put one there, one there, one there, and then complete the circle. Now it's important to remember when we're dealing with ADM that I'm gonna be using an example referred to as uh, an axle and a wheel throughout the whole uh, subject. And what that means is that a, when I refer to spin of the wheel, I'm referring to this as a wheel, and I'm referring to this as an axle. All right, so basically there's an axle, which I'll explain now, and then you take the wheel, you put it on it, and you spin that around the axle as often as you can. All right. So what you've got here is a series of crop circles or phases now that help you develop architecture. And we'll look at architecture iteration and different ways that you can dice and splice this to make your architecture more effective. But let's just take a quick spin through the cycle quickly. So at the top here, you have what's referred to as the preliminary phase. All right? And really, that's the setup of your axle. And really, what you do there is you actually set up your architectural practice, your architectural capability, all the stuff we've learned about in the last few topics, the repository, the continuum, categorizing your data, deliverables, artifacts, skills, and team members, all of that goes into the preliminary phase. So in other words, you have the capability to produce tangible architectural outcomes. Then once that's set up, you now get, are ready to spin through this wheel. And every time you're faced with a particular problem, a project, an initiative, or a task or requirement coming from business, you will document that into what's referred to as an architecture vision document. So that's the architecture vision phase. And coming out of that phase, you, you, what you do is you take a very high level view of, okay, what are you going to accomplish at an, from an architectural perspective as you spin through this wheel? In other words, so let's say you have to, um, uh, look, look at uh, architecting a new way to make your value chain across your organization more efficient. Well, you're going to document that at a high level and describe what it's going to look like. At this point, you're also going to communicate to your stakeholders how much it's going to cost them for you as an architecture team to go through that exercise, and you're going to get sign-off from that. Once that's done, you're going to go into the business architecture phase. Oh, just one other item, quickly, while, before we go into business architecture. The architecture vision, you're going to work across all of your architecture domains. And by an architecture domain, I mean business, data, application, technology. So these are the predominant domains that the TOGA framework recommends you work with. So let's go into one of the first areas, which is the business architecture, which deals with the business domain. Right. So what you've got here is business architecture. And you're going to be developing your architecture across sort of three areas. Right. Business architecture, information systems architecture, and technology architecture. And here you deal with the business domain. Here you deal with data and applications. Right. And here you're going to deal with your technology. Now, in the business architecture, it's all about understanding the business. It's all about um, looking at processes and functions and capabilities. And you're going to learn a little more around those concepts later on in other topics. Within information systems architecture, it's understanding the data that you're working with or information sources. And that could be something from a signed leave form right up to a database or some customer information sitting in the cloud somewhere in, in the internet somewhere. In the application space, well, the world's full of apps nowadays. It's all about apps, and so no, that's apps, the type of apps that we're referring to. In other words, those pieces of automated processes that are running on your iPad or your computer or something to that extent. And you know, Microsoft Office is an app, you know, so. You know, you could even make uh, Angry Birds. That's actually an app, surprisingly enough, and it's fulfilling a particular business requirement. Right? In the technology space, now you're actually looked at designing the technology that those applications are going to run on and be operated and managed by. 
That's kind of the predominant space of developing your architecture. Then at the bottom of the cycle, you have what's referred to as opportunities and solutions. And this now, you start to look at your solution building blocks. In other words, all right, now that I've gone through that cycle, and I've looked at current state and future state and my gap, all right, so let me just re reaffirm that. As you go through business architecture, information systems architecture, and technology architecture, you're looking at current state, in other words, the current business piece or the current application piece. You're looking at the future state you want to achieve, and you're looking at your gaps. Now, in the opportunities and solution phase, you're looking at all of that data, you're looking at your gaps, and you're looking at what solutions can we now actually provide. Can we actually outsource this bit? Can we get a vendor in to uh, complete this bit? And you're producing a series of solutions. Once you have that, you move into what's referred to as migration planning. That's now when you, you bring the project management discipline in play, and you start to address specific um, costing efforts and resources required to deliver the solutions that you've recommended. At that point, it goes off and starts to get delivered by a solutions team, right? and that's outside of the architecture space. But that doesn't absolve the architect from his responsibility, because that architect is now responsible for what's referred to as implementation governance, in which the architect consistently looks out and says, well, this is what I told you to do, this is what I architected, and are you doing the right job? And he's going through an iteration here of, of just validating what's occurring uh, against your architectural plans. And then finally, you have architecture change management sitting here. And that's not change management as in changing the paradigm of an organization. This is more about managing your architectural discipline, the change that comes from implementing architecture. So in other words, if we discover something while we're implementing that isn't quite right, we can feed it back in and we can fix it. If we discover fundamental flaws with the architecture or even the framework that we're using, we feed that back in and we make architecture better. In other words, it's the optimizing space. And it's normally really only used by really mature architectural teams. And then finally, sitting in the middle here, you have requirements management, which tends to be a fairly a weaker area of the architecture discipline, and one which we rely a lot on our business analysis um, colleagues to help us. Um, and that really is e extracting, eliciting the requirements from your stakeholders. And you can see that you do that all the way through the cycle. So you'll never stop capturing requirements and architecting for those requirements. Now, that's a very high-level view of the ADM, which is the architecture development method. And we're going to be now drilling down a little further in that as we go through the other topics.